Okay, good morning, everybody. I hope uh, all of you can hear me. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for your attendance uh, to our very first JMN of academic seminar. My name is Yutaro Onki, Associate Professor of Kyushu University JMN office. Today, we will have our lecture of Professor Seiichi Uchida as the very, as I mentioned, as the very first uh, academic seminar series of JMN project. And uh, Professor Uchida is a professor of graduate school of information science and electrical uh, engineering. Uh, before we really uh, start his lecture, I'd like to show you, or I would like to, uh, yeah, show you some important instruction regarding our uh, academic seminar series. Uh, first of all, as you are doing now, please keep your mic mute uh, during the lecture session, unless uh, we, we permit you to speak at Q&A session. Uh, after his lecture, we will have 10 minutes Q and 10 minutes a bit more uh, Q&A session. Uh, except that time, please keep your mic and uh, also uh, camera off. And one more thing, uh, in the Q&A session of this lecture, please uh, use this time for asking regarding the content of Professor Uchida's lecture. Uh, so not for scholarship or admission procedure or life in Japan or et cetera. This kind of questions we can answer if you ask uh, us by email or some other ways. I will show you how you can ask us uh, such kind of uh, inquiries. And one more thing, this lecture is recorded and uh, this lecture will be uploaded on Jmena YouTube channel. So please do not uh, record by yourself and, pre uh, and please check our YouTube channel if you missed some part because of the um, internet connection or some other issues, you can check it later on our YouTube channel. So I hope you can enjoy and uh, this lecture will be a good opportunity for you to, to rethink about your future uh, career in Japan. And they are, they are all welcome to our uh, lecture series. And uh, Professor Uchida, thank you very much for giving us a uh, lecture today. And yeah, the floor is yours. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Maybe. Yes. Okay. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Yeah, I'm Seiji uh, from Kyushu University. Yeah, today is, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, this kind of topic, right? Okay. Yeah, this is a self introduction. Uh, so I'm Seiji, I'm a professor and uh, in Kyushu Island. Kyushu is uh, one of the largest islands of Japan and actually west side of Japan. And uh, uh, so so I'm in uh, Fukuoka prefecture. Yeah, hi, 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 hi. Uh, yes. Have a slide, slide uh, maybe, maybe the slide did, doesn't move. We, we're still oh. watching your first slide. Oh, really? Oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry, why? Why? In just a moment, I will retry. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, now, now I can see that self introduction. Sorry. Really? It's, it's strange. Yeah, uh, again. So I'm in. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you. So I'm in uh, Fukuoka Island. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry, Kyushu Island here. Uh, can you see my castle? Yeah, must, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a very small one. You can see maybe. Uh, yeah, and, uh, I'm in uh, Fukuoka city. Yep. And uh, actually, to Fukuoka is uh, the mega city, but they're uh, very easy to live. Mm. If you have a chance, please visit here. And anyway, so Kyushu University, 
uh, has a, one of uh, the largest university campus in Japan. Yeah, so uh, actually, as you know, the Japan is a narrow country and uh, it might be much smaller than your university, but it's still uh, largest in Japan. And also, well, so my research topic is a uh, pattern recognition. Uh, that is a uh, topic, one of the topics today I explain. And also uh, the application of the machine learning and optimization and image informatics and interdisciplinary collaborations. Yeah, like that, so I'm from the computer science field. I hope you have some interest uh, in this field. But anyway, so before starting my talk, so let me excuse one point. So maybe you already recognize my English is, yeah, not so fluent. <laughs> so, so yeah, actually I'm not very not good at uh, speaking English. Yeah, I have no big confidence. So, but please do not worry. In, in Japan, in Kyushu University, there's many uh, good English speaker, profes speak, speaking professors. So please do not worry. Yeah, so please, I'm just a bad example. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah, so this is the agenda of today. So I, uh, oh, just a moment. This seems so slow. Uh, okay, uh, this is agenda. So today, sir, I uh, explain, first explain about artificial intelligence. And then some pattern recognition. The pattern recognition is a, one of the research topics of artificial intelligence. After that, so I will uh, briefly explain my uh, research achievement on uh, visual design analysis, analysis. Yeah, so and I, well, it is a bit difficult for me to set the level of this lecture because I don't know uh, your uh, knowledge on computer science and artificial intelligence. So, so sometimes it's so difficult for you. Sometimes it's so easy for you. Uh, but I decided to make my presentation the easiest, uh, easiest as possible. So, uh, if you are already an expert of the artificial intelligence or pattern recognition, the the first part of my talk is boring, very boring. It's because it's so simple and so well elementary. So I'm sorry if you are uh, not so. Uh, in, uh, no, how can I say? Uh, my my lecture is too too elementary for you. Okay, uh, let me start with uh, art, the introduction of the artificial intelligence. Of course, maybe all you already know about this. But uh, well, let me start from the fundamental of the AI. Yeah, so of course, artificial intelligence is a research to realize the inte human intelligence by computer. So uh, the, the fundamental question of the AI is what is intelligence? Yeah, so we human being have, uh, why is so slow? Oh, yeah, sorry. So uh, the human has our own intelligence, human being have our own intelligence. So what is intelligence? So we human being thinks many, many, many things. Uh, uh, we can calculate mass equations. Yeah, this seems like intelligence. Yeah, so, well, some many, many uh, other uh, intelligence we have. But for realizing the artificial intelligence, we have to define the what is intelligence? What is human intelligence? But it is very difficult and abstract question, and it's very hard to answer. But uh, so I'm going to next slide. It is so slow. Yeah. Uh, there, maybe some of you know the, uh, the famous uh, mathematician, Alan Turing. There, he defined uh, their intelligence like that. So imagine so you are talking to uh, you, this is you. The left side is you. Uh, and, uh, and in front of you, there's some wall. And behind the wall, there is a computer or human. And you discuss with this one, 
uh, by uh, in this situation, in this condition. And if you cannot distinguish uh, the, the things behind the wall is a human or computer, then this computer, this machine have our intelligence. Yeah, why it's so slow? <laughs> Just a moment. I'm, I'm, now I'm speaking a bit about a bit in Japanese. Kore ima mechakcha osoi desu yo ne, slide. So, kore ima tsugi no slide ni boku no gamen dewa itteru n desu kedo. Ah, mada mae no slide desu. Ah, utsurimashita. Ah, kawa mai. Kita sensei no kamera o kitte yasu ka. Ah, boku no, ah, so, kamera o kitte yasu ka. So, I will stop my video. So, that. But still, I back to the previous one. But so I'm now watching the, my uh, talk in a different computer, but the slide changes so slow. <laughs> so, but I don't know. Well, I, anyways. So can you hear my voice speech without any delay? In Japan, at least, we, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. And other participants are saying, yes, yes, yes. Oh, thank, yeah, you. thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. OK. So I'm sorry. So my uh, sometimes my uh, slide, uh, my talk is not well synchronized with slide. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so again, so if you cannot distinguish the machine from the human by this kind of the blind setup, so the machine is defined uh, to have uh, its intelligence. So nowadays, uh, you can find this kind of AI around you. Yeah, so AI, yeah, so chatbot uh, is, uh, you, maybe you know the chatbot, you can communicate uh, with their system by your chat and the system automatically answer you by using its own AI. Uh, yes. Yeah, so it's a asterisk looks like a Turing test. And maybe in your future, uh, your SNS friend might be a machine because now the chatbot quality is so good. <clears throat> and there, <clears throat> uh, another uh, AI, well-known AI, either this kind of, uh, sorry, next slide. Uh, it's so-called AlphaGo, maybe you, you know. Uh, I'm not sure you know the game Go. Uh, Go is a uh, kind of battle game by uh, two players. Yeah, so in 2016, uh, their AI AlphaGo beat be that the human go champion. Yeah. So the system is based on the deep learning. Uh, yeah. So it was so sensational uh, news in our field. <clears throat> Under next one, just a moment. So in Japan, there at least there was a fancy project uh, that aims uh, that can AI pass the pass the entrance examination of University of Tokyo. Uh, the University of Tokyo is a top university in Japan, so its entrance examination is so difficult. Yeah, so this project tried to uh, solve uh, their uh, entrance examination questions by AI. Yeah, so in 2015, yeah, it could mark the good score. Yeah, so not the University of Tokyo, but uh, the AI could pass uh, the entrance examination of, well, standard universities uh, examinations, yeah, with uh, high probability. But uh, and here in this table uh, show the scores of AI and human. Yeah, so in 2016, uh, the project 
the reader said that they will give up. They give up uh, this project. Why? Yeah, this one reason is uh, this. Yeah, so in the physics, you have to answer the question by uh, understanding the figures. Yeah. So, well, you can find this kind of figure in a physics ex examinations in your country. Yeah, for us, you can, uh, for you, you can immediately understand this small ball. Oh, yes. Uh, in a, in a, in a left, left figure, a left figure, uh, there is a small ball. So you can understand that this small ball uh, move around, move like a, a sac move, uh, showing some circular trajectory. Yeah, but there, for us, the, this big circle, it, uh, we, for us, it, we can easily understand that this big circle is just a trajectory of a ball, of the ball. But for the computer, it is very difficult to understand what it is. Yeah, well, for if your computer is stupid, uh, it can misunderstand. This big circle is also a big ball. Ball, maybe it's a very silly misunderstanding, and you never think like that. But a computer will do this misunderstanding. And also for the right side, picture yeah this is a uh, a ball is swinging but uh, yeah in this picture snapshot uh you can see the three three balls so our computer can misunderstand the this situation yeah so these three balls are swinging together swinging together yeah and this is also misunderstanding but for ai it might be difficult to understand this figure correctly and also, uh, this is another difficulty. So it's an English listening uh, exam. So after uh, listening the sentences, so you have to choose uh, one uh, good figure among four choices. Yeah. For you, uh, you can immediately understand the, what these cartoons mean. Yeah. But for the computer, uh, like physics, physics experiment, so it's still also difficult to understand what what is going on in this cartoon. Yeah, for example, you can see uh, the Y-shaped line segment on the at the top uh, uh, over the head. And uh, of course, you can understand the these lines line segment uh, means the uh, ceilings. But for the computer, I'm not sure they can understand this is the ceilings. Yeah, it's it's looks like uh, you know antenna sticking out from the head of course this is wrong misunderstanding but a computer might think like that yeah like this some illustration and cartoons are very difficult uh, task to understand for a computer yeah uh, this is background uh, the very brief explanation about ai and now let me explain about pattern recognition. Yeah, again, so pattern recognition is uh, one of the research area of the artificial intelligence. And uh, you human, we human being is uh, doing the pattern recognition always, right, even now. Uh, so for example, uh, that you are watching something and understanding. Uh, that object in front of you. In this case, you can under, uh, recognize Apple, right? So this is a so-called so-called image recognition. Yeah. So you're uh, recognizing sort of some picture and the illustrations uh, in front of you now, and there, at the same time, uh, you are listening to my talk and hopefully <laughs> understand uh, what I'm saying. So this is a so-called uh, speech recognition. Yeah. So we are doing it, doing such kind of the recognitions from the morning to the evening. So always, always unconsciously. Right. So the pattern recognition uh, in AI research is uh, we want to realize a pattern recognition function by computer. Uh, yes. 
and uh, yeah uh so for the image recognition so we uh attach a camera to a computer and then so try to recognize uh the, what is the object in front of the camera by a computer uh, for the speech recognition case uh, we use a microphone uh, to understand uh, what the speaker is saying right yeah nowadays uh, such image recognition and the speech recognition is a very common and uh, I, I guess your users of these kind of applications the uh, typical one is a face recognition yeah so there's many level, levels of the face recognition yeah, the easiest one is a face detection. The way is a face. And the second level is a face identification. Uh, who is this? Uh, and there another application is a smile detection and age detect age estimation and the baby recognition. Yeah, so in your smartphone, uh, you can find this kind of function, right? And you are, I think you are using this kind of uh, pattern recognition application already. Yes, and uh, uh, here a question arise. So is the pattern recognition easy? Yeah, so as I told you, uh, the pattern recognition is a very easy for human being. And we are doing the pattern recognition even unconsciously, yeah, every day, every, yeah, every minute, every second. Yeah, but as I told you, uh, it is still difficult for computers, yeah. Yes, it's still, uh, yeah, so it is still difficult, but nowadays, so this difficulty is relaxed by AIs, uh, improvement of the AIs. Yeah, uh, this is uh, the image recognition uh, application, and you can find some rectangular around the object. Yeah. Uh, this is a so-called object detection task and there are nowadays the ai deep learning uh, can understand this kind of uh, object in visual object yeah so here uh, right upper picture you can find the two dogs yeah so in the past uh, the ai just can recognize there is there are two dogs but recently uh, the AI becomes much more smarter, and then the, then it can recognize it is a dog, not only just a dog, but the, it is a Siberian husky, and also the, it's a, it, the, another one is a German shepherd. So it can answer uh, the types of dog. Yeah. So well, like that. Some nowadays we have the great improvement of the image understanding, uh, image recognition. Yeah, uh, by deep learning. So uh, from now, to let me explain about deep learning. Yeah, <laughs> so maybe some of you already know about it. So uh, maybe disappoint uh, by disappointing by my explanation. Yeah, so deep learning is a one of machine learning techniques. And uh, uh, so what is machine learning? Yeah, so machine learning is an algorithm to determine the function y equals to fx. Yeah, so well, fx, right? Uh, by using many examples of pairs of x and y, right? So maybe it's better to check the bottom figure, right? So in this case, uh, this is an example of the image recognition. Yeah, so the left side is a training of a machine. Here, X is image and Y is uh, its uh, object types, uh, right? So, well, we give the, this dog image and the uh, uh, object type dog, a, a pair. And if we give many, many uh, pairs uh, image under uh, object type pairs and uh, the f the function f becomes smarter and smarter the finally after this training step so you can test uh, the ai a machine machine by input uh, unknown image x 
uh, if f function f is trained uh, sufficiently, this the f will give a right answer to this unknown input image x. Yeah, this is a testing phase. So, so the question, final question is what is deep learning, right? Yeah, so uh, deep learning is a method to realize the function f by deep neural networks. Yeah, so deep neural, I, I'm sorry, I can have not enough, I don't have enough time to explain the deep neural networks, but I, well, uh, you can imagine a big machine with many, many parameters and they're controllable parameters. Yeah, this is a deep neural network. So by controlling the huge number of parameters by the paired examples, the, uh, this function f, it becomes smarter and smarter. And finally, it shows a very strong uh, uh, performance. Yeah, the, the, this, uh, just a moment. Yeah, uh, since, uh, the core, uh, since our deep learning gives a function f, uh, so we can imagine this kind of the function for the case of the image recognition. Yeah, there x is the image and the, for the given image, and uh, it can uh, give uh, object class, object type like this. So uh, deep learning can realize this function f appropriately by using a huge number of the uh, training samples. Yeah, maybe if you maybe you know the word regression. Yeah, so in in short, uh, deep learning is a kind of the nonlinear regression method, heavily nonlinear and, and the powerful. And there, uh, nowadays, uh, many many. Uh, just a moment. Yeah, uh, nowadays many many sensational uh, achievement has been done by using deep learning. Yeah, one of the well known achievement is a medical image diagnosis. Yeah, this figure shows the skin cancer diagnosis. Yeah, uh, in this case, input X is a skin image, our output is uh, no cancer, not cancer or cancer. And there, in this paper, it is reported that the, the AI, a deep learning, could achieve better performance than human uh, doctor, medical doctors. Sorry, why is so slow? Yeah, this is another application of the deep learning, a so-called image captioning. In this case, uh, input is image and output is a description of the image by sent as a sentences. As in this, or here, uh, input is image. Oh, sorry, uh, image, and they're showing some market. Then the AI can recognize uh, what kind of the objects are captured in this image and give. Hello. Uh, Professor Chita. It's just, oh. もしもし。Hello? 大丈夫です。Hello? Hello? 大丈夫です。なんか一瞬き消えてしまったようです。Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's very strange. Yeah, maybe recording is stopped. Yeah, still? Okay. Still, still recording. Anyway. Yeah, this is image capturing applications. And there, another famous application of deep learning is a uh, colorization. Uh, 
absolutely so slow <laughs> colorization. Uh, in this case, uh, given the, the black and white uh, gray photographs, and then the deep learning outputs the image with color. Yeah, so in this case, uh, input is and output are both of input and output are uh, images. Right. Well, another uh, well-known framework of the deep learning is uh, generative adversarial networks, so-called so GAN. Yeah, so this is uh, AI with uh, two neural networks. One is a generator and another one is a discriminator. So the generator try to generate an image and the discriminator try to discriminate uh, the generated images from the real images. For example, for example, if we want to generate the face image, uh, the generator try to generate the face images, but uh, and the discriminator try to discriminate the generated face images from the real face images. Yeah, so both of the discriminator and the generator are trained uh, alternatively. Then the both of them have a very good skill, and especially generator could have the very high, uh, a very a generator can generate high quality images that can cheat the discriminator. So it uh, looks like a battle of two deep neural networks. And there, uh, yeah, uh, this is a recent, uh, not recent, two, three years ago, uh, the result uh, of face image generation by uh, GAN, GAN. So upper row indicates the generated, generated face images. Yeah, so this is, they are face of the non-existing persons. Yeah, the bottom are real face images. Maybe you cannot distinguish uh, the fake uh, generated images from the real images. Okay, uh, now uh, the final topic, the visual design analysis with machine learning. Yeah, this is our uh, research result of our laboratory with my student. Okay, so... Yeah, so maybe you know the visual design. Oh, it's so slow. <laughs> Why is it so slow? Are, are, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah, we so can hear slide. you. Can the slide doesn't change. Why? Ah, <laughs> now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a visual designs, and there, yeah. So there is several types of the visual designs: the font, book covers, and advertisement icons and logos. So I have strong interest to analyze these visual designs or graphical graphic designs by your machine learning technologies. Yes. Yeah, it's a bit problematic. Why? Yes. So for other trial, uh, the first one is a book cover. So we collected uh, 0 0.2 million book cover images uh, from Amazon and uh, try to understand the book cover images. Yeah, so first trial is a uh, book cover uh, genre classification by uh, book cover images. Yes, we train the deep neural network to classify a uh, given input images into one of the 32 genres. Yeah, these genres are defined by Amazon. Yeah, for the, uh, yes. And there, yeah, the, this slide shows the result, uh, several result of uh, genre classification. Yeah, so this AI, this deep learning cannot read the text, title text, but still can recognize the genres. 
uh, with a 25% accuracy. Yeah. So, well, for us, it is a bit amazing. Yeah. The, so, without reading the title, so the CNN, DNN can recognize book genres. That just means the book genres is designed not randomly, but under uh, but, uh, under some certain uh, trend. Yeah, uh, this is either uh, a bit advanced research of a previous slide. So we won't know the which part, which object are really important for genre classification. Yeah, for this purpose, we try if we apply some object detection method uh, of a book cover image. And you can see some uh, boxes some on the uh, book cover surface. And you can, at the same time, you can find some red dot. Red dot indicates some, some important part to understand the book genre. So by using this result, you can guess the, which kind of the box are very important. The box correspond to the, uh, some visual object like a person. So by this, so we can understand uh, the, uh, the, for example, the per how person appearance is uh, important for a general classification, right? So in this bar chart, uh, box chart indicates some, for example, romance. You can see the romance, Ooh, romance here. Uh, yes, the romance has a higher relevance of the person to class, uh, to this genre. This means a romance is uh, a person is a very relevant to a romance uh, genre. Yes, in other words, if you find some person image on the book cover, yeah, so there is a high probability of uh, the genre is the romance. And on the other hand, some uh, the person existence of the person is not so important for business and the test preparation. Okay. Oh, sorry, wait for... Yeah, so please remember about GAN. So GAN is a neural network for generating some image. Yeah, so we use GAN for generating the book cover uh, yes, for, in this case, we give a layout of a book cover. And then uh, the GANs automatically generate the book cover. Yeah, here you can see the bear and snow. Yes, and the, from this layout, the GANs automatically uh, generate some bear like object on a book cover image. Uh, these are examples, eight examples of the generated images. Yeah, so sometimes it's so, the object is uh, very noisy, but still you can uh, see, uh, for example, the pizza in the bottom. Yeah, and a book cover. And also titles are generated. And the next uh, trial is the font analysis. Yeah, font is also uh, important visual designs. And you can, uh, uh, reading many letters every day, and they're printed in font. And there, uh, you can you can find huge variations of the font uh, on the book covers, for example, and also uh, the bottles uh, everywhere. So here we analyze the variation of the font on the book cover image. And for this uh, research, we have to extract detect some title part title under text part from the book cover images. And uh, for that, so we have, we use many AI uh, uh, techniques. And finally, we could have this kind of the genre-wise uh, histogram of uh, font usage. And there uh, you can find uh, here, you know, the serif on the sans serif font. Yeah. Uh, here, for example, the engineering books uses more sans serif font, but less uh, serif font. Uh, like that, uh, a font selection is not random. For each genre, the designer choose their font, appropriate font, based on their experiences. So if their choice is random, 
so this heat map becomes just white. But as you see, uh, this heat map shows there is some uh, positive peak and a negative peak. This means uh, the choice is not random. So the same technique can be applied to the online advertisement. Yeah, so in a, on your smartphone, you can see uh, the advertisement every day. Uh, there is uh, the advertisement often also uh, includes some textual information and the textual information is written, uh, printed in some font. Yes, so we can apply the same technology to understand which kind of the font and which kind of color is used for uh, the text on a specific uh, advertisement. And also uh, the, we can analyze the relationship between the color and the words. Word. Yes, by using some AI technologies. Ooh, yes. Yeah, so for example, uh, in this slide, you can see, uh, okay, the leftmost, the upper leftmost, you can see the, the, it's a color distribution of the word, word lemon. lemon. Yeah, so in the, as you expect, the lemon is often printed with a yellow or greenish colors. And the strawberry at the bottom, so the word strawberry is often written in the pink or something. A more interesting thing is anger and the sorrow. The anger, the word anger is often printed in the, well, uh, red color and the solo is a uh, pale colors are used. Yeah, another, another interesting thing is uh, intelligent and stupid. Yeah, so both of the uh, those words are printed in a similar colors. This means uh, intelligent is somehow fat similar to stupid. I don't know. Yeah, and the last one is the guilty and the innocent. Guilty is a purple. Yes, innocent is not purple. <laughs> Yeah, so this kind of the large scale uh, survey is now can be realized by using deep learning technologies. And also, so maybe you know, uh, the font carries some impression, right? The different font give us a different impression. Uh, in this example, uh, the top example shows uh, the, yeah, uh, plain and rough and legible. And the bottom is a ghost and unusual. Like that, some, each font has different impression. So my question is, why does this font, each font give a the elegant impression in the, for the bottom case? Yes, this A either gives an imp uh, elegant impression. I won't know the reason why this A gives an elegant impression. For this, I employ the path-based uh, method uh, this means that we focus on a part and, uh, and uh, try to understand which part keeps their uh, elegant impression by using the deep learning technologies. Yeah. So for, for this research, we employ some deep set uh, method and get the result. And there, these are several examples of the result. Yeah, so the top row indicates some, some local part that are very important for giving the ancient impression. And the middle one is the important part for the rough impression. And bottom one is a, well, uh, part, important part for legibility. You know the legibility? Legibility is a, uh, the situation that the letter is very easy to read. Yeah, so for better legibility, so this result indicates a wider space. Yeah, maybe you can see the brown, brown circles. Yeah, so brown circles part, it's wide, uh, wide space are necessary for the beta legibility. Yes. So, uh, so we could understand which, kind, which part determines the font impression by this part based strategy. And uh, uh, we can do many things about the font. Yeah, for example, this is a font generation by GANs. As you remember, the GAN can generate uh, the images. But here we generate font. Yes, all of those 
font Im uh, letter images are generated by uh, AI uh, GANs. So here is another trial, uh, not just uh, generating the font, but uh, we want to have a font, a font images with a specific impression. So for this, we give our impression as some constraint of a generator. Then, so we could generate the font uh, with a specific impression. Uh, Yeah, uh, these are examples of a font with specific impression. My favorite is the LCD and the agent. So LCD is a, a, a like a bottom picture, a LCD the dot structure, the font, and the agent is an old, old styles. Yeah, so this is a good hybrid of the uh, LCD and the agent. Under next slide either. Yeah, so by using the different AI technique, uh, we can design the very strange font. Uh, yeah, this is so-called style transfer technique. Now slide coming up. Please. Why? <laughs> Actually, it's not so easy to make this presentation because you know <laughs> the time delay. Uh, I have to place my button a bit earlier than my speech uh, speak. Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. yeah. This is a style transfer. Yeah. So given a style under base font, so we can have some mixture of uh, them. Yeah. The bottom one is a very flowery uh, font, best by this uh, framework. Yes, maybe it's better to go. Are you? Okay, let me skip several slides because of time. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so this is uh, another visual design icon. So we try to generate icon images from the photograph images. Yeah, so for this, we also use GAN framework. Yeah, so if you give a photograph, then the, the system provide, generates icon. Yeah, so you can find the, uh, some cute icons are generated from the human uh, photographs. And also we can generate more illustration like uh, icons uh, from our photographs in the bottom uh, examples. Yes, uh, sorry for uh, about internet connection. Yeah, so um, my take for messages are as follows. Uh, there are now AI uh, deep learning uh, realize many interesting applications. And there, I think the visual designs or graphical graphic designs are very interesting target of the deep learning deep neural networks. And uh, uh, I couldn't say, uh, but there, there is still many open problems to play with. So we have to play with these new problems, uh, problems by using the AIs. Oh, sorry. And uh, the postscript. Yeah, this is the last slide. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Just a moment. Yeah, so it's a very small uh, postscript. Uh, my lab have many other research activities. And uh, also nowadays, uh, computer science has a strong connection to the other uh, research areas, for example, biology on the medical uh, medicines and uh, yeah, the robotics, of course. Yeah, so our lab is also doing some uh, interdisciplinary collaborations. And uh, yeah, so finally, uh, let me uh, say uh, that our, our department, computer science, covers many interesting topics, including theoretical machine learning, robotics, communications, uh, software science, and information theory, blah, 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 blah. And uh, so I hope you have some interest. 
in AI and computer science at the Kyushu University. Thank you. Sorry again for this bad connection. That's all. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Uchida. And uh, I think now we have 10 or some minutes more for Q&A session. So I would like all the, I would like all the participants to ask some related uh, questions. But uh, yeah, we already have one question from uh, Beizanu. Sorry for my pronunciation, but uh, if you like, you can say it by your voice, but uh, uh, if you like, I read your question, uh, I can read it, but yes. uh, which, how you talk? I, 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 I did, okay. Uh, it's a, maybe Professor Uchida can read uh, it, but uh, if I read it, all yes, general, yes. Yeah, all generator exports to the same learning right. material would generate the same design if they are given the same instruction, right? Could AI be made creative? Uh-huh. Yeah, so for, I understand. Thank you for the question. The further, uh, the first question, uh, I, I can answer it to the yes or no, uh, because uh yeah so actually the the internal situation of the dev, uh, generator will depends on the its initial condition so if its uh, initial condition is a slightly different it can produce a slightly different uh images so yeah but if you have uh, you train uh, the two generators with the totally the same initial condition, they can provide the same result, right? This is the answer to the first question. And the second one, either all AI could be, uh, uh, could AI be made creative? Yes. So it's a very good question. Yeah. So, so if you can if you can search the internet for a creative adversarial networks it's a so-called can can creative adversarial networks yeah it's try to generate uh some very new general images so it's try to try to generate untrained unlearned images as much as possible so based on such a method uh, nowadays, AI can uh, create something new. So, yeah, of course, some, uh, the neural network is de designed by human beings. So it's not totally creative, but uh, yeah. So now we can have some unexpected uh, generated result uh, by using uh, such kind of the systems. Thank you. Oh, sorry. So many people think it's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, so, yeah. Uh, but, uh, one. yeah. So, middle. Yeah. And uh, uh, other question do, uh, from Asia. <laughs> Asia, do you work with GANs on your lab? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, yes, we yes, have. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, the uh, yeah, so our lab, uh, our laboratory play with GANs pretty much, but nowadays we are uh, shifting a bit far away from GAN because, uh, you know, uh, if you have played with GANs, so you know there is instability. So, well, uh, training the GAN is not so easy. The many tips, tips, tips are necessary. And the many hyperparameter tuning are necessary. It's not so easy. And uh, nowadays, our lab is starting to use a transformer. Yeah, so transformer is uh, easier to use uh, for for generating the new samples. So uh, if you you want to generate something by using neural network, now I recommend you to use a transformer instead of GANs. This is my answer. Yes. Anyway, so my uh, lab 
my laboratory played with their guns pretty much. And, uh, architecture field, yeah. So for the architecture, I personally have no experience with the collaboration with architecture, but nowadays, some, uh, yeah, actually architecture is a huge area, research area. So we have many uh, points uh, for collaborations. Yeah, so for example, uh, some uh, in our architecture area, we have to measure uh, some building or some internal structure. For that, so we can uh, use some computer vision technologies to measure uh, some some the size of the object or some something like that. And also, uh, some people start to use AI to calculate. Uh, the I don't know the English word stability of the buildings by using some AI technologies. So, uh, so well, I personally think that some collaboration between the computer science and architecture becomes some more tighter and tighter from now on. <laughs> and the uh, yeah, next question is uh, what is the most popular programming language? Yeah, nowadays Python. Maybe you know that Python. So most of my students use Python. And uh, well, another question. Uh, <laughs> thank you for showing uh, your positive message about Japan. You, yeah, you love Japan, nice. <laughs> thank you. Uh, and... Yeah, so for the last question, Yes, maybe it's Oki Sensei will. Uh, uh, any uh, other question? Yeah, yeah, before we answering the question from Aija san, maybe uh, if you have some other question relating to the, the lecture itself, we are very happy to uh, receive it one or two. If it's okay, uh, we, want, we would like to close this session. Mm. No, no, not entire session, but... Uh, the lecture itself. Okay, so yeah, it's also related to the question from Aija san, but uh, yeah, uh, sorry. And first of all, thank you very much, Professor Uchida, for your valuable and informative lecture uh, for a very short period. And uh, yeah, <laughs> the. Before we did it, I'm end, sorry, so yeah. maybe some of you are oh, sorry. Some of you are very expert of computer science. So, well, you were uh, <laughs> you were boring about my very elementary introduction. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, so please. <laughs> I'm also, I want to share my screen once again, just to show you some bit more. Yeah. Uh, please take a screenshot of these slides because, yeah, the question relating to the, the very last one, the question from Aija san. Uh, yeah, actually, the laboratory of Professor Uchida is quite very popular these days. So I think it's very difficult for you to, to join his laboratory soon. So, yeah, it's a, it's kind of unhappy news for you, maybe. But uh, we have uh, various, um, let's say, laboratory relating to international information science or some other uh, areas. So I would like you to visit, or I would like you to ask us uh, regarding these questions. So we have various ways uh, for you to ask such questions. Uh, and if you can take screenshots of this right, you can uh, you can access to our Facebook, Instagram, or some other SNS. And via these SNS, it's, uh, you can ask me uh, directly your question about the admission procedure or such kind of things. And of course, you can send us email. And furthermore, uh, now we are recording this video, and uh, we will upload this video on YouTube. And our YouTube channel, it's just the JMNA study in Japan Global Network project, but uh, you can ask from here too.